Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, um, I'm Calvin Schwartz, the guy on top in the middle there. Uh, I'm a journalist, novelist, environmentalist. Uh, been an environmentalist since the first Earth Day, which was April 22nd, 1970. It's a long time ago. And I am also the host of the YouTube series, Conversations with Calvin with the Species. And I am part uh, of this dynamic new global group of environmentalists called climate optimists and part of our mission uh, is to educate gen z high school middle school baby boomers uh, uh gen x and even beyond there is a beyond classification of which i'm one uh and and it's to educate uh part of that mission is to educate uh uh people to the stark world of climate change. Uh, this is our first uh, video. We're going to introduce some of our uh, very accomplished, unique members, uh, some authors as well, uh, with their backgrounds and some of the topics they will be talking about on, on future videos. Uh, I want to say we welcome new members uh, always. Uh, we welcome new members. Uh, uh, and in and, and, and my opening remarks and parting, I say, if, if we all do something, uh, even the small things we can do, uh, and even for everybody out there, if you can find your superpowers, go ahead and use it. Uh, and, and now I, I, uh, I have this great big welcome uh, to climate optimists. And uh, to introduce our first, uh, our first member, uh, who's going to uh, speak a little bit background and bio and topics, is Gaetano Lardieri. Take it away, Gaetano. Thank you, Calvin, and welcome everyone. So uh, my name is Gaetano Lardieri from Newark, New Jersey, USA. I've been in the medical field since 1978, and. Uh, 40, um, 26 of those uh, years, of those 40 something years, I spent in oncology research, working with cancer patients, thousands of cancer patients, and also worked in the uh, big pharma, running global clinical cancer trials around the world. Uh, in 2015, I started two biotech startup companies focusing on cannabis and social justice, nanotechnology, synthetic biology, and aerospace science. And um, Basically, uh, those areas I concentrate on are cannabis and, and sustainability and, and using hemp as alternative um, building materials. So these, these, two, these two industries are, are their global emerging second industrial revolutions. Um, 30 countries have legalized medical cannabis, 36 states in the U.S., 19 states are uh, for recreational marijuana, and cannabis is one of the fastest growing industries in, in the USA. It, it supports about 321,000 full-time uh, jobs. Uh, uh, SpaceX, uh, uh, basically cannabis um, and hemp is being used in, in, in space. Uh, Elon Musk has a $100 million um, prize called X Prize, seeking technology for carbon removal. Right now, the movement with the Democrats and society in general, they're leaning towards decriminalization of cannabis, and the UN um, also approves a WHO recommendation to reschedule cannabis. So there's a whole movement around cannabis. Basically, I just want everyone to stay tuned. My job over the next month is to pull together an all-star panel of experts and advocates on how to move these two global emerging industries into the future with an emphasis on sustainability, innovation, and how to remove or mitigate carbon, the carbon footprint, which will, be, which will all positively contribute to the climate change issue in, in general. So with that, thank you, and um, I appreciate great. the invite. That's great. Thank you, Gartano. Next up, uh, Grace Agnew. Hi, everyone. I'm Grace Agnew. I'm a librarian at Rutgers University in New Jersey. I've been at Rutgers for 19 years. In addition to being a librarian, I've been a data management specialist and uh, working with large scientific data. So I've known about climate change for a very long time before it became a popular topic. Um, I was really very disheartened at how 
gloomy and dire the predictions for climate change were, and also very intrigued and interested that scientists could be so passionate about their work and yet still, you know, raise families, you know, sail boats, do whatever, you know, you do and, and live, live without, you know, being incredibly depressed and unhappy about what they were studying. And I do realize that that's the essence of science is that you have to leave your emotions behind. But I also feel that that has been one of the problems with climate change is we haven't engaged people emotionally. They haven't really, we haven't really made it resonate with them. So I, I think I have two really strong interests. One interest is I think it's important to put the story in data. I think it's time that we start telling compelling stories that get people behind climate change. And I did my first novel, Sanctuary, is actually a book about um, a mother and son. So it addresses you know, both generations, kind of my generation with all the guilt that we have about the following generations and the generations that I deal with every day at Rutgers, the you know, students and younger who are wondering if they even have a future. So I think it's important that we start talking to them, acknowledging their fears and reflecting their fears in literature, in music, in all of the arts. I also think it's important to realize there are solutions. Climate change is going to be horrendous. We can't fix everything, but it's not monolithic. There are going to be many environments, macroclimates, microclimates. Some of these will be more workable and habitable than others. My novel focuses on using permaculture and forest gardens and sustainable agricultural techniques to address the macroclimate that we're going to see a lot of places, which is the Dust Bowl climate, where we've depleted water resources and we've destroyed the soil. That fortunately does happen to be a climate that we know how to fix and that we're successfully fixing. So sustainable solutions and facing our fears, acknowledging them and getting them out there um, so that people don't feel like climate change is something that can't be discussed and that they have to turn away from. Those are my primary goals. Great. Thank you, Grace. Next up, Wajid. Hi, guys. I'm Wajid Hassan. Um, I I was originally born in Pakistan, raised in England, and now living in the United States, in you know, North Carolina. Uh, I have a, a, a extensive field service engineer repairing computer systems. I then spent a number of years uh, as a working actor, uh, as a working union actor. And uh, in the background, uh, I've always um, been had a tremendous interest in metaphysics, spirituality, uh, and um, climate change is real. Uh, I, I wrote a book uh, uh, that was published last August, which uh, was number one on, uh, on Amazon on two subjects, primarily um, mysticism and spirituality, and the other one was UFOs. And so um, my angle is, is bringing out truths which have not been revealed to the mainstream uh, by the mainstream media or, or to the masses, truths which uh, people need to be aware. Of. Primarily, the first one is that the fact is that we, most indigenous tribes have known for centuries that we live on a living, breathing goddess called Mother Earth. And there's more to climate change than carbon emissions. Uh, there's a tremendous uh, change going on right now. And um, uh, which uh, I'll be heading a panel on uh, October uh, the 6th, uh, where we will discuss uh, these aspects of truth, which uh, I think the listeners will not only find fascinating, but inspiring, and a message of actually a tremendous hope uh, for the future, because people are scared right now, uh, people are worried, and I want to bring forth uh, inspiration based on truth that I've learned from my own uh, yogi master, Dr. George King, and bring those to the table, uh, to the world, and let people know that, yes, there is climate change, but at the same time, there is hope. Thank you, Raji. It's kind of what this group is about, uh, climate optimists. So uh, next up, uh, Kevin uh, Albin, uh, uh, actually in Paris right now. Thanks, Kelvin. Hi, everybody. 
Um, Kevin Elbin here, and I started my working career as a police officer in the UK. Um, somewhat perhaps glamorous in that I worked for eight years on the tactical firearms team, police are not um, uniformly uh, armed in the UK. Uh, and I worked as a hostage negotiator for many years. I had a change of heart back in 2002 and retrained as a mountain guide and uh, set about doing expeditions, mainly in uh, Asia, working in Borneo rainforests. And that com completely changed my outlook and introduced me at first to conservation work and the need to spread the word and get my clients to come on board with regards to what was happening in the world. From that, I grew a passion, certainly with rainforests, and I've worked all, all over the world with that, but also with the local people and their efforts in trying to stop climate change and to allow the natural process of the world to, to, uh, to take place. And I was exposed to things such as uh, poverty, food poverty, certainly lack of equality in the world. Uh, and that just fueled me further to make sure that uh, I could spread the word and, 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 and draw attention to these things. COVID hit, of course, like everyone else, and I um, took to writing and I, I too wrote a book, uh, Stone Child, which is uh, somewhat bizarre, perhaps, of the statues of London that come to life with a connection of their uh, dead counterparts uh, with a view to spreading the word and convincing us of the need for change because of uh, the climate, climate problems, climate issues. Uh, and at the same time, in realisation that there are, is going to be a lot of fallout with regards to mental health issues, I retrained as a mental health first aider, and I'm now actively involved in advising people and helping people with climate anxiety. So very pleased to be a part of this group. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. And finally, uh, uh, Alan Hess, uh, who's in Quito, Ecuador right now. Hi everybody, thank you Calvin. Yes, I am in Ecuador. Uh, my background is, is multicultural. I was also born in Pakistan as it happens like Wajid, and, uh, but I'm of British and French descent um, and I live in Ecuador. I'm a conservation biologist professionally and have been uh, involved in you know, uh, on the ground conservation for almost 30 years now, all in Latin America. It all started after an expedition I joined um, after graduating in the UK. I joined an expedition, I helped set it up um, to the Bolivian Amazon and it was a three month expedition. I ended up staying for 20 years and uh, I learned conservation on the ground, seat of the pants uh, before getting my degree in it. And, uh, and during that time, I developed a parallel passion for illustration and authoring comics and graphic novels. And so my role really with climate is it's a climate education, much, much like uh, our other guests on, on this panel. Um, I like to tell stories uh, and, uh, and I do it with graphic novels, uh, the adventures of Captain Polo. Um, sorry, you can't really see it well here. It is a graphic novel about uh, an anthropomorphic polar bear who travels the world and learns about climate change and also climate solutions. There we go. Captain there you Paul. go. Thank you. That's book two in the series. So those, there are <clears throat> four of those books in the series already. I'm working on the fifth one and uh, done other co comics as well along those lines. Um, but, you know, I'm interested in climate education using innovative means, using education entertainment, that mix between entertainment, making it appealing. I'm interested in not preaching to the choir, but preaching outside the choir. Uh, there's a... a uh, Calvin, you mentioned you you were have a, assisted a very very prestigious uh, event with international panelists, some of them including Al Gore, and of of great profiles. And yet, only four hundred people were attending uh, these webinars. Well, it's the other it's the other people on the other side that I want to get to, not those four hundred, but the ones who should be there. And so I believe in entertainment. I believe entertainment brings a storytelling element to, to important uh, educational topics. And uh, some of the subjects that I'll be uh, discussing in future videos on this, on this Climate Optimist panel include building climate literacy through innovative communication and entertainment. You know, how important is climate education per se? 
uh, the role of nature-based solutions, going back to my conservation side, the nature-based solutions for climate change, um, and, uh, and how to talk to kids about climate change, really. Uh, so those are the subjects that mostly interest me, and I, I really look forward to, to those discussions and the others that we have planned. Thanks for giving me the time. That's great. So we've come to the conclusion of this sizzle reel. Uh, we've introduced everybody, and, and now we have a little bit of a call to action. Our, our next program will be on Wednesday, October 6th at 4 p.m., uh, and it will be with Wajid Hassan, and, and the topic of his panel that he will be leading uh, is Living, Breathing Mother Earth. Uh, and, and having read Wajid's book, uh, uh, it's so fascinating and it is so right on and some of the things that he talked about, it kind of blew me away. So uh, that's Wednesday, October 6th. Uh, and again, I wanna thank you all for being here and being part of, of this group uh, and to be continued soon. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks. Bye.